The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So for, for the, a sister that's going into the proven process, you should already understand that it's, it's your responsibility to submit yourself to your own husband. If he's teaching you God's laws, if he's telling you, if he's uh, directing or giving instructions to do something that's not breaking the commandments, you should be full-fledged in line with it. Like, okay, understood, and, and keep it moving. It says, submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. Read. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. So it says, the husband is the head of the wife. There go there, that's that's the, the, there go there word that stood out in the definition of master. When you begin at the he that get at the wife begin at the possession. Now you're a head of you head you're a head you're the head of a house. It was a class I think a, a few years ago. I think it was by Officer Maratza. He said one of the things he said is when you get married, it's like start it's like starting a business because you are responsible for the affairs. If you are responsible for the affairs that go on. You are responsible for what get deposited into that into that business or that marriage, and what get what what needs to be extracted and taken out. You have to under you have to already understand that going into a marriage. Read on. And he is now the jump savior. To, jump to 20, 25. Verse twenty five. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it. So. Husbands, it's, it's the response. Going into a, when you're going into the proven process, brothers should already understand that it's going to be your responsibility to love your wife, meaning you have to teach your wife. You got to provide for, you got to feed your wife. And then if, when y'all have kids, it's your responsibility to make sure it's food on the table, make sure it's a, a roof over the head, make sure bills are paid. That's your responsibility. And if you're not doing these things, those things would cause, you, that, that would be you teaching your wife an easy, evil lesson. That's, what, that's one of the things it was talking about in Sirach 9 and 1. You'll be teaching your wife an evil lesson if you're not doing those things. Because now she's going to look at you like, do you really believe? Because you're not doing these things. You're not doing what the, you, you're supposed to be Christ. You're supposed to be Christ in the house, but you're not doing the things that Christ did to the church. So you're teaching her evil. You'll be teaching her an evil lesson. Read on. Verse 26. Verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Read. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And going into the proving, you should already know as a man, my responsibility when, when I do get married is to teach my house so that what it say? So he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, so that she's not, she won't be a wicked woman. Because as the scriptures say, a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. So if you're not doing these things and she's doing evil things towards you, it's because it's your fault because you wasn't teaching her. It's your fault because you wasn't dealing with her with mercy. You wasn't dealing with patience. You wasn't ruling the house correctly. You was being a lion. You pushing her away. You never at home. All of those things is what say he that that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You have to make sure that you're applying the scriptures. Uh, from there, go to First Corinthians seven and thirty-two. Book of First Corinthians chapter seven, verse thirty-two. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong unto the Lord, how he may please the Lord. So as a, as a single brother or sister, all your focus should be on how you, should pl how you please the Lord. You, you studying. You, 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 uh, you correcting your ways. You adjusting your, your bad habits to line up with the scriptures. You doing the work. You passing out flyers if you're able to pass out flyers. You come in the, brothers, you come in the MOV. If, you, if you're able to come, if you're eligible and able to come to MOV, 
you should be on MOV. If you're physically able to be physically at the school, you should be physically at the school doing MOV. You shouldn't cop out and be on Zoom. Sisters, if you're able to be on the Titus II meetings, you should be on them Titus II meetings because those are the things that set up to teach you how to be a, a woman and a wife. You, had, you can't neglect those things. So in the proven, in a, in a stage of proving, those are things you're observing. Okay, is this, is this brother going to MOV? Is this brother actually coming to the Sabbath? Is he coming to the new moon? Is he, is he doing the work of the Lord? Or is he just sitting back? Same thing with sisters. You, you're proving a sister, but she's not doing nothing. She's just sitting in the channel being quiet, saying shalom. She just get on and say shalom every day, but don't, she's not interacting with sisters. She's not getting on the tightest twos. She's not doing the work of the Lord, so to say. Because what will happen, if you, if that, that, that's something that you can't ignore. Because how do you, how do you judge somebody's faith? How do you see that somebody believes by the work that they're putting in, by what they're doing for the most high? If, that's, if they if they if if they not doing nothing and you go ahead, go through the proven process, ignore it, and then y'all get married, what you think gonna happen? They're gonna pull you out the spirit. They're gonna stop you from doing the work because it's gonna be all about me, 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 me. But when you're unmarried, you can focus on that. You can when you when you're not married, your focus is doing the work. Read on. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. So when you get once in a, once you get married, it's no longer just not saying that you're not gonna do the work of the Lord, but it's no longer not it's it's no longer just work 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 work. You always out. You always at the school. You always doing this. You always on the flyer mission. You always here. You always there. No, now you have to balance that out because now you have the wife. You have a wife to tend to. You have a wife to take care of at home. So you got to have some balance. You got to create a level of balance where you're still doing the work of the Lord, but you're also not neglecting your wife. Same thing with sisters. It's the same thing, flip-flop. Because real quick, jump to 29. Verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. So now this scripture say, though they that have wives be as though they had none. So the work, yeah, the work still got to get done, but that don't mean you just fully neglect your wife and don't do, don't do your duties as a husband, and you always, you always at the school, you always at a flyer mission, you always doing the work, you always doing this. Same thing with sisters. You can't always be, you always consumed with posting on, you, you always consumed with doing things that's pertaining to the body. You always going shopping. You always... Um, you always at the school decorating. You're the only one that's always there every time. You always doing so. You're neglecting your household duties. You always doing for the school, but the house is in shambles. You're not guiding the house. You're not guiding the children. That can't be. That can't be the case. And come going into before you go into proving, you should understand that. Because if you don't understand that, and you and your thought is that you're going to neglect that, you're not ready to prove. Because it's going to be trouble from day one when the marriage starts. It's going to be trouble. Uh, from there, no, go back, to, go back up to 34. Verse 34. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. So going into a, a marriage, you, should have, you have to understand that. You, it's, it's a normal, natural thing. You have to be concerned about the things that your husband needs and the things that your wife needs. Whatever level of attention they need, you have to, you have to be able to balance that in the doing of the work of the Lord so that you're not neglecting the work. You're not neglecting the work and you're always at home hugged up. Neither should it be you always doing the work and you never showing any attention to your, your husband or your wife. It has, you have to balance it. It has to be balanced. Um, go to Second Peter chapter 1 and 10. But the mo most important thing of going into, going into the proven process, your own spirit got to be right. Because if your spirit ain't right, you, you, you setting yourself up for failure. Because your, if your spirit ain't right, who, what you think you're going to attract? 
you going you if it, a sister if your spirit ain't right you're gonna attract the out, uh, out the spirit brother brother if your spirit ain't right you're gonna attract uh, out the spirit sister that's what had that's what that's what the leadership call a backdoor marriage two out the spirit people link up lay down and then now they marry and then they they marriage is start in shambles and probably end in shambles because they both was out the spirit read what you got Book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So this is what your focus should be. This is what your main focus should be, being in this truth. Especially when you, when you first come in, your main focus is giving diligence to make your calling and election sure. So that you are grounded in the, in the commandments. That you grounded in the most high commandments. And that's not, not just... Knowing precepts, where you can somebody asks you a question, you can just pop off the head. What what a pre what 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 precept it, what precept what the book chapter and verse it is. No, that's not what it's saying. Make di take diligence to make your call and election sure, meaning that you are applying the commandments. You reading, you studying, so that you can apply. You doing the things so that you can apply the commandments. That's individually. That's why the council is. When you first come in the truth, unmarried, one year. One year before you even think about proving a sister or a brother. Because you got to make sure that your mind is right. Otherwise, you're going to take them, them broken spirits into, into that proven process and, God forbid, into the marriage. And now it's going to be a, a, a broken sister with a, with a, a broken man. Because y'all didn't, you didn't take the necessary steps to get your own spirit right before you even thought about proving. Uh, Book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 27. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. You come into the truth, you, so you come into the truth and you're already married. Marriage is rocky. Work, to work, work on studying, searching the scriptures out so you can fix it. Work on studying the scriptures out so you can fix it. Don't seek to be loose from your wife. Don't seek to try, to try to do things to push her away from you so she can commit adultery. Now you, oh, yeah, I got what I want. I can get a divorce. No, seek not to be loosed. Read. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. So you come into the truth single. Your, your thought process shouldn't be brothers. You single brothers, your thought, you shouldn't be looking on this side of the room when you first come in. Sisters, you shouldn't be looking on that side of the room when you first come in. Your, your thought process should be let me get my spirit right so then I can so then I'll attract the, the right brother that's going to guide me right in this truth and keep me in this truth because otherwise you want to attract a demon if you don't get your own spirit right so it's, it's now go back to so it says are thou bound to a wife seek not to be loose are thou loose from a wife seek not a wife not saying that you're not going to have you that you're not going to have a desire to be married but that shouldn't be your focus. Your focus should be getting your spirit, doing the work of the Lord. The first, the first part of the work of the Lord is getting your own stuff together. Getting, getting yourself grounded so that you're keeping the commandments. So that when you do get to that point, you know what to look for. You're able to, you're able to discern, okay, this is an off spirit. You are, you're able to see the red flags when they, if, they, if they fly up. So that if you're proving somebody in, in a, a bunch of red flags to show that they don't believe, you can see them because you, you done rooted yourself in, in the laws. You'll be able to see those things and you'll be able to save yourself from going into a, a rocky situation. Go back to uh, 2 Peter 1 and 10. Yeah, start from the top. Book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So diligence is continual effort. It's a continuing day-by-day -day thing. You're looking, you examining yourself, you're looking at the scriptures, things that you battle with, whether it be lust, uh, gluttony, um, so you have a, a stealing spirit, you got a covetous spirit, you're looking in the scriptures to get yourself right. You're looking in the scriptures to ward off your own demons first and foremost. You're giving diligence to that. That's how you make your calling and election sure. You're studying to apply. Read. For if ye do these things, Ye shall never fall. Because that's how you root yourself. And that's how you, be, that's how you maintain yourself, your stability in this truth. By studying. Even in, the, even in the case where you come into this truth and you are already married. 
each end of yes, you, you already married. You got to learn the things that it, that applies to being a husband. You got to learn things that applies to being a wife and applying. But you also have to dig deep yourself individually. You have to, the brother and the sister, they, you have to study and read the Bible yourself. And that's where, with, with sisters, you read, you, you reading for yourself, that's where questions are going to come around. You read and you read and you read, you come across you know, something you don't understand, you go to your husband. He don't know, then he can come and get the answer and, and bring that answer back and edify his house. That's the, that's the order of the marriage. Um, go to James chapter 2 and verse 17. Book of James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. So it says, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. So after you got yourself grounded, you, you grounded, you stable, you got some deep roots in you as far as it relates to keeping the commandments, you do, you do start proving, you, you, you start looking to prove. The person you looking to prove, you should be able to see their works by their actions. You should, see, you should be able to see their belief by their actions, how they act towards this truth. If they making excuses towards coming to the Sabbath, they making excuses for um, for getting busy in the work of the Lord. If they not showing, if they not showing their faith by their works, nine times out of ten they don't believe, or their faith is weak to where y'all not gonna be on the same level. It's not going it's gonna be rocky. It's gonna be a rocky start. You got to make sure you root it. And if you if you didn't if you didn't take the step to make sure that you rooted and grounded, you wouldn't even see that. Because you wouldn't even be judging, you wouldn't even be judging the proven process by the scriptures. You'd be judging it by your carnal mind. Read. Verse 18. Yea, a man may say, though thou hast faith, and I have works, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So, one one. Pivotal point of the proven of proven process, both parties should be putting in work. Because if you've been, if you, if you, if you followed the council and got your spirit right for that year, that means after that year you're eligible to be active in the body. You're able to be act actively doing something, part of an office. You should be actively doing something. But not, not to say that you're gonna you're not gonna be physically attracted to somebody, but if they're not doing no work, that should that should in that attraction right there and there. Because they're not doing the work and you doing the work, they're going to stop you from doing the work. Or they're going to complain when you're doing the work and they're not doing the work. You could be, you could be, you could have a good balance, but the, the time that you're doing the work and they're not doing, if you're doing the work, they're not doing the work. And the time come where you're doing the work, you, you, let's say you balance, you spend time and all of that, but then your time you're doing the work, they're not doing the work, they idle. So they're going to pull you away from the work because it's like, okay, what about me? What about me? So you have to judge. In the proven process, you got to judge by what are you doing for the most high. If you ain't doing nothing for the most high, I'm gonna I, you got to bypass that person until they show forth some works. Read. What verse you at? Verse 18. Read. Verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Well, it says, you believe that there's one God. What verse you say? Verse 19. 19 says, the, the devils believe. So even the devils believe that there's God. And they tremble because they know, the, they know that it's a God and they know that they, they, know, that they know his judgment. But you have a brother, brother, a, a brother that don't believe and is not doing the, they can, they can be in here with a Bible, no precepts, and not believe. And you would know they don't believe because they're not putting in no work. To, to get around the brothers, to get around the sisters, to be active and help and push push this truth. They not they not active doing nothing. They just sit. They come they come to Sabbath class, sit, watch class, and then leave out the door. They not stay, brothers not staying to help clean up. Sisters not staying after to get in get on get on the circle. They not getting on the circle if they if they at home if they can't come here. They they not getting on the circle on Zoom. Those are red flags to say, nah, this person don't believe. I ain't even gonna, I ain't even gonna waste my time. So those are things you gotta keep in mind. Read verse 20. Verse 20. 
But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Faith without works. You can't say that you believe and you're not doing, you're not first and foremost keeping the commandments and then putting forth work to help build up. As a build up the school, build up the congregation, helping, assisting with things. That's both on the men and the sisters. So before you, first and foremost, before you even start a proven process, you got to ground yourself and root yourself in God's laws and keeping of the commandments. So that you, under, you have a, under, a thorough, a, 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 a grounded enough understanding to see red flags when they, to reflect, see red flags when they come up and be like, nah, this, this, this proven process ain't going to continue because this brother don't believe, this sister don't believe. That's what our minds got to be on. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.